Fault finding is one of the most challenging aspects when working in the electrical industry. Today we're going to talk to an apprentice from the Isle of Wight College to discuss some of the methods that can be used to identify, locate and rectify a fault. Hi Ryan. Hi, nice to meet you. And you? Come on in. Thank you. So Ryan, you're working in the electrical industry as an apprentice studying electrical qualification. Is there many situations you come across where you have to rectify faults? Largely in domestic, we have to identify, uh, locate the fault and rectify it. Okay, so what's the most common type of fault that you come across when you're working in a, a domestic property? We had one incident the other day where we had a short circuit and the circuit breaker kept tripping. They had put up a curtain rail above a light switch and when they were installing the curtain rail above it, they put a screw straight through a cable. It caused a connection between the protective conductor and the live conductor. Mm -hmm. We had to rectify that by installing another cable into the switch. What are the stages that you would go through to identify what that fault is? Communication with the client is really important, finding out if any, anything has happened to the installation, any additions uh, like shelves or curtain rails, anything, anything like that. Once you've communicated with the customer and you've got a good idea of the installation, what's been going on, you still can't quite identify what the fault is or where it is. What would be the next step that you would take to try and locate the fault? So we take a, take a walk around, get an idea for the circuit, see if there's any mechanical dam obvious mechanical damage to the circuit, if uh, any cables have been hit through walls, uh, any damage to the accessories, anything like that. Prior to carrying out any investigation of a fault, the circuit must be securely isolated. Have a look at the IET's student guide video on safe isolation. Remember that we are only testing the wiring system, so it is essential that we remove or isolate all equipment that is connected to the wiring system. For example, remove plugs from socket outlets, switch off spurs and light switches, as this could affect the results when testing. Short circuit, a common fault normally caused by some form of mechanical damage to the cable, such as a screw or nail being driven through the conductors, causing the live conductors to come into contact with one another or the CPC. This type of fault will in most cases operate the protective device immediately, whether it blows a fuse or trips a circuit breaker. A short circuit can be identified using a low ohms continuity test instrument. An open circuit is commonly caused by some form of mechanical damage to the conductors. This can be a difficult problem to diagnose, especially on a lighting circuit or circuits with switches and online starters. This type of fault can be identified by carrying out a simple continuity test to identify that all conductors are intact. High resistance. This can be the result of a deteriorated termination, poor connection or simply a faulty product or poor installation. This type of fault can potentially go unnoticed for many years if an installation is not periodically inspected. High resistance can be identified with a low ohms continuity tester. Cross polarity. To put it simply, cross polarity is when the conductors are connected the wrong way around, such as a line conductor has been connected into the neutral terminal and the neutral conductor has been connected into the line terminal. This is not really defined as a fault, as it is usually a result of poor practice and lack of experience. Cross polarity can be identified visually, or if this is not possible, a continuity test can be carried out at the terminals to identify if the conductors are in the correct terminals. This is an image of a ring final circuit. Somewhere on this circuit there is a fault, and by using the sectionalization method, the fault can be located with accuracy. The first step is to remove the conductors from the terminals. Once this has been done, you can carry out a test on the conductors and determine what type of fault there is on the circuit. I found out that there is a line to CPC fault. Um, I'm getting a low resistance between line and CPC, so I'm splitting the circuit up and roughly this is the midpoint of the circuit. So hopefully this will isolate the fault to one half of the circuit and from there I can separate it again till I pinpoint where the fault is. The next step is to find the fault. To begin locating the fault, the circuit must be split into two parts, known as the half-split method. As you can see, using this method instantly splits the circuit into two parts, each half the size of the original. Only this time, one half of the circuit has no fault. In this example, there is a fault between the line and the CPC conductors. When a continuity test is carried out, it will indicate a low resistance between these two conductors, indicating a short circuit between line and CPC. 
You can continue splitting the circuit into smaller sections, retesting each part until you've located exactly where the fault is. After splitting the conductors at that socket over there, I've tested at this socket between the CPC and the line on the same leg and I found that the problem lies between this socket outlet and the consumer unit. So Ryan, you carried out the fault finding procedure. You identified that there was a, a short in the circuit or an earth fault between line and CPC. You sectionalised the circuit, which means you broke it down into individual parts and you managed to locate exactly where that fault was. Now you had to rectify the fault. Can you explain to me what you did to rectify the fault? Yep, by removing the uh, damaged piece of cable and installing a new piece of cable rectifies the fault. With that in place, you have everything connected again. You've terminated your socket outlets and the consumer unit. So are we in a position where we can energise the circuit now? Uh, not just yet. We need to perform all the dead tests to make sure that that circuit is still fault free. So even though you've rectified one fault, you still need to go through the procedure of carrying out the dead tests again, yep. just to make sure that there's no other faults on that circuit. Yeah, because we've altered the circuit. Thank you very much. No problem.